What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny Frill, whatever you want to call it. Quick PSA. We're about 20 games into the NBA season, and because of that, we kind of have an idea of some of these teams, right? I think early in the season, I was watching as much basketball as possible, trying to watch every single game because I was trying to see signings, trades, coaching decisions, and things like that to try to get a feel for these teams. And now that we're 20 games in, we kind of have an idea for most of them. I understand teams can go on droughts, teams can go on runs, and we'll talk about them then. But I'm saying that to say there are going to be teams that I don't watch as much now. Because I kind of understand who they are. Like, my, my Chicago Bulls would fit into this category if they weren't my Chicago Bulls. I have to watch every minute of every game. But there will be teams this season where I kind of, my, my watch time has went up and it's slowly going down. Like, for example, and I, I'm sorry Detroit Pistons fans to say this, but, like, what's the reason right now to watch the Detroit Pistons? You get what I'm saying? Like, why? I will tune if hey, if it's a close game with five minutes to go, like that, that run that they went on against the Utah Jazz the other day, I'll tune in 100%. But I'm not going to sit here and vividly watch a Detroit Piston game because I kind of understand the result of it. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully y'all understand that and that that means like maybe more condensed episodes or whatever it may be. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new. I kind of want to start off this episode talking about the Miami Heat because right now they are 7-14 and they just lost a game that I would say is inexcusable. Every team goes through bad losses. It's inevitable as, as basketball is basketball. Sometimes the shots go in, sometimes they don't. You know, it doesn't matter who your competition is, sometimes you're going to lose. But today, to lose to the Washington Wizards, who at, at, before this game was the worst team in basketball, record-wise, I don't know if they still are even after this game, but not even just losing to them, they lost to them without Russell Westbrook in the lineup. So I want to give quick praise to the Washington Wizards, Bradley Beal. Rui Hachimura was aggressive, um, a couple clutch-clutch rebounds down the stretch. Same thing with Troy Brown Jr. Daniel Dia was um, hit the big old dunk from him. I think that was his first. NBA dunk ever so good overall game for them but we have to talk about the Heat I think that a lot of us fans if you remember my, my preseason preview about the Miami Heat I, I posed a question and I think this is something that we all agreed on um, trying to find the answer to how much of what happened in the NBA bubble was sustainable how much of it was legitimate you know what I'm saying? And and if you remember the GM survey, a lot of GM scouts and people around the league believe that what the Miami Heat did, that legendary run that had them in the championship against the L.A. Lakers, was fake. They were a team built for the bubble environment. And so far this season, I'm not saying that they, they're looking like to be true because I'm not going to make any bold predictions right now, but it is really, really rough. If you remember me talking about them a couple weeks ago, I was saying that watching them is hard for me because they're missing Jimmy Butler. If you're missing your star player, you're going to lose a lot of games. It's just it's just real. But not only were they missing him, they, they were missing other players to the, to the virus. They were missing players with injuries and stuff. So I took a... a a very, very slow approach to watching the Miami Heat. But over the last couple games, Jimmy Butler's back. Today, they were pretty much at full strength. I know that Avery Bradley ended up going out halfway through the game, but they were pretty much at full strength, and they end up losing this this game. And it's a bad one. Um, I've never really watched a Miami Heat game where I thought that Spolster – whoa. Am I about to say Spolster got out coached by Scotty Brooks? <sighs> All right. There has not been many times in, in me watching Miami Heat games that I can say that he's been out coached. Today was one of those days. And maybe it's not outcoached that he made, like, overall just really baffling decisions. For example, if you didn't watch this game, let me fill you in. The Miami Heat are down by three, and they have possession of the ball. Who, out of all players on the Miami Heat, I'm, this is a little trivia question to you. Out of all of their players on the roster, who is a guarantee must be on the court? You say Duncan Robinson? Because I think every NBA fan would say, oh, the guy that has broke three-point records in his first couple years should be on the court when your team needs a three, but instead he wasn't. And the two people that were out there that were questionable was Kelly Olynyk and Goran Dragic. Now, I understand if Kelly Olynyk was having a great game or Goran Dragic was having a great game, keep them on the court, but both of them are bad today. So I don't understand how Duncan Robinson isn't on the floor when you need a three. That was just, that was just the weirdest thing. But overall, this team this team has been really struggling. But what I will say is I would reserve overall criticism over reactions for at least two more weeks when they have their full roster and they've been playing together for a while. That's, that's what I say. But so far this year, it has been rough. And what makes it even worse is that, okay, hypothetically speaking, this ain't, this ain't a season. They take a step back. It's similar to, oh, my God, was it 2016, 2017, or 2017, 2018, where they had a really good season, then a year after that they were just buns, just out of nowhere. Um, if that's similar to this case, uh, they don't even have their first-round pick. I think that goes to OKC. Say, I'm Preston, you mad, man. I think that goes to OKC or something like that. Um, but it's just, yeah, it, it is it is kind of weird, some of the things that, that are going on with this, this team. Because if you remember our preview, when we were talking about, like, the Bucks, we were talking about the F Phillies, like, a lot of the top teams in the Eastern Conference, we talked about how they got better. Other teams got better, and the Miami Heat didn't. A lot of their reliance on them getting better is hoping that Tyler Hero 
pretty much does the exact thing he did in the bubble, but for a full season and plus the playoffs. And so far, it hasn't been the case. You know what I'm saying? They even lost Jay Crowder, who was such a big part of that championship run. So, um, Big Weird, we'll, we'll talk about them again throughout the course of the season, and we'll come back to this and see how much of what I'm seeing on Twitter from other people is overreactions or how much of it is real. All right, let's get to some of these other games that I end up watching. Um, the Mavericks beat the Hawks. Big win for them because they were on a, a terrible, terrible win streak. The best thing about this is that they had a Porzingis game. He played like the player that they they paid him to be. Um, and, and I know they won this game. I wish that this team had another player on the roster or in their, their five that they usually close out games with that I would say is an average to above average playmaker. Luke is great. He ended up with 14 and says, we know Luke is a great playmaker, but the Atlanta Hawks do like this double team at him, and they didn't have that secondary playmaker to do literally anything. And I thought that's what Josh Richardson was traded for to be, but he hasn't lived up to that. It's been a weird season for Josh Richardson, and I and I remember the trade happened, and I was like, that's a win-win trade. The 76ers get shooting, Josh Richardson comes into the, the Dallas Mavericks, and he's going to be a playmaker, he's going to do all the little things, play defense alongside Luka, he just hasn't been good, and I remember the Miami Josh Richardson was really solid, I was a big fan of it, and these last couple of years have been really, really rough for him. Um, the, the, the Hawks lose this one, they don't have DeAndre Hunter, that's a big, big blow, especially when you consider that Cam Wright has really struggled today. Uh, Cam Herter had a good game until the the... The Mavericks threw like the zone at him, and he was really kind of fumbling the bag. But the biggest takeaway again, and this is the same thing we said all last year, and I thought they found an answer for this. When Trey Young is not on the court, the team is bunts. I thought them signing Rondo and them signing Chris Dunn, who hasn't played yet, would have been the remedy to, to stopping the bleeding when the bench is in and Trey Young isn't. But today was a prime example that when Trey Young was off the floor, the team is dreadful. Shout out to John Collins for having a great game, but they lose this game because they don't have backup point guard play. That, that's just that's just what it is. That's just what it is. Um, Quick brief ones. The Clippers beat the Cavaliers um, because Paul George hit double the amount of threes the Cavaliers hit as a team. So easily. Check that off. W. It's good to see that this, the, the Clippers continue to do their thing. I think they're the best team in basketball record-wise, and that's good. And and I've been seeing a lot of Clippers fans like, why aren't you talking about us? Why aren't you talking about us? I'm, not just to me, but like to the overall media. And I think that's better. Like last year, y'all had the magnifying glass on your roster. Everything that you did wrong, everybody was talking about. You don't want that. Just go into the playoffs with no buzz. Surprise some people. It's good to see Paul just playing this way. Can't wait to see what they end up doing in the playoffs. The Bulls lose to the Knicks on the, the good old um, baseball series. The Bulls win the first game. The Knicks win the second game. At the end of the day, Julius Randle was unstoppable. He was hitting shots. I've never seen a player like him hit. Um, Alfred Payton took 20 shots, which is ridiculous, but he hit, he ended up scoring 19. Overall, it was weird to see that IQ didn't get as many minutes, especially since he played so well, uh, at least in the first game. The Bulls missed every shot. And they gave up a bunch of offensive rebounds. If you can't hit your threes, you give up offensive rebounds, you're going to lose. But my, my one last thing before we move on to the next game when it comes to the Chicago Bulls, love Kobe White. I, I think, and this is what we kind of knew already, but it's I think it's starting to really show, he's a two. He's a shooting guard. There's no shame in that. We gave him a chance at the point guard position. He's a two. Um... So we, we need point guard play bad. We need point guard play and playmaking bad. That is young as our best playmaker off the bench. We need we need more point guard play. Um the <laughs> the Thunder beat up on the Rockets, who were looking so good. But I think John Wall missed his game. This is one of those games that I literally didn't watch. But from what I could tell, Darius Baisley, Al Horford played very good, very good. And Theo Maladon, great defensive plays, I guess. The Timberwolves blew a game that I was 100 percent sure. <laughs> when it was happening that they had the bag secured. Bro, the Spurs are such an under-the-radar team. At 12-10, and 10, DeMar DeRozan's getting no love across the league. That man is crazy. He took over this game. Him and Trey Lyles, which is weird to say. The uh, um, the Spurs went small ball, having Trey Lyles be in the center, and he was stretching the floor. I think the start of their, their, their run, I think it, they were down by 15 in the fourth quarter and they ended up winning this game. The start of their run came with Trey Lyles hitting the big shot, and then Trey Lyles put the ball on the floor and, like, dunked the ball, and he drew a foul. I'm like, wait, why is Trey Lyles playing great all of a sudden? They didn't have um, they didn't have LaMarcus Aldridge today, so Trey Lyles moves up and Drew Ebex moves up in the rotation. But a great, great comeback. This man, DeMar, is so, so good. I asked a question on Twitter about a week ago where I was asking people, who are some players in the history of basketball that came into the league known as non-playmakers but turned into playmakers? DeMar DeRosa is the perfect example of this. He was not a playmaker's first couple years of his career. And now at the old age of 30 plus, he is great. There's so many great passes he threw this game. And it was just overall a beautiful, beautiful comeback. I had turned this game off. I, I When the game ended and I got the little thing like, oh, this, the Spurs won. I had to go back and rewatch the whole fourth quarter because I couldn't believe it. 
the Timberwolves, uh, I don't know why why Nas Reed was out there because, like I mentioned, they went small ball for the Spurs, so Nas Reed didn't really have an effect there, and he's not a defensive player anyway. When I talk about Trey, Young, Trey Lyles putting the ball on the floor, that was to get past Nas Reed because it was so sweet. Um, and then they need better fourth quarter planning, bro. D'Angelo Russell took he- hella shots in that fourth quarter, and he wasn't hitting any of them. So they need better they need better production um, in that fourth quarter, better game plan in that fourth quarter. Zion has an amazing – Zion is getting better every single time I watch him play. And you know what's crazy? He's not the NBA token boy anymore or pretty boy anymore. Like every season it's a guy. Luka was the guy. Zion was a guy last year. And this year's LaMelo Ball. No matter what LaMelo Ball do, it's everywhere, which is cool. LaMelo Ball is a cra- crazy fun player. But nobody really talks about Zion anymore, which is kind of crazy. Even in the card market, for a little while, his value had dropped significantly. I'm like, why? He's playing his best basketball. It's because he's not doing highlight plays. Who cares about highlights? This man is unstoppable. His playmaking has gotten so much better just throughout this season. Throughout this season. And he hit a three. Huh. Lonzo Ball looks really good, and he's starting to put together multiple, multiple games. They're allowing him to play more on guard instead of him playing off the ball, which is everybody knows that that's how Zion, I mean, that's how Lonzo should play. Overall, good game on national TV. I don't really know what to take away from the Suns, man. They're about as confusing as it gets. Devin Booker takes some of the toughest shots I've ever seen. They're super confused. I don't know. I need to watch way more of them to really get a gauge of how good that team can actually be. And then the last game, whew, I feel like I've been going at it. The Sacramento Kings get a win. Let's talk about De'Aaron Fox because De'Aaron Fox is so fun to watch. Um, my boy was asking who's the fastest player in the NBA. It's got to be De'Aaron. I know John Wall giving him a run for his money. Russell Westbrook is still fast in his old age. But that man, De'Aaron Fox, is 0-60 to 60 and 0.2, it feels like, bro. He is gone. So many possessions. He's got past his defender. And I know that the Boston Celtics were light-handed because um, – because Kevin Walker didn't play, so Tremont Ward has got a lot of run. And I was rooting for Tremont to have a good game, but he just didn't. He just didn't have a good game, man. I wanted my short king to stand up and, and have big moments. And they were this close to coming back and winning this game, man. Um, it was the missed free throw. Get it back. Jason Tatum got a good goodish look. It just missed it. Tyrese Halliburton is everywhere on the court. Deflections, re- offensive rebounds, hitting shots that you, he shouldn't hit. Overall, like I've been saying, the Kings are fun when things are going. And today was one of those days where things were going. Whew. Wow. Thank y'all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave it a like, man. Call game.